The community started with two guys. I was at an advisory board and I was showing a film. I was showing a retrograde case that I'd done. And Craig Thompson walked behind me and said, what is that? I said, well, it's this retrograde case that I did. And Craig said, who are you? I said, well, I'm Bill Lombardi, who are you? He goes, well, I'm Craig Thompson. And we basically talked to each other every week since then. Added Aaron Grantham in 2008, and shortly thereafter, Mike and Tony, and it was always gonna be about collaboration. And so as we rolled along, we just kept the doors open. If you wanted to take good care of patients and teach people how to do it and not be competitive and not be egocentric, welcome to the community. My name is John Jacobs. My friends and customers all call me Jake, have since I was just a young boy. I got into the car business in 1959, and I tried to retire, but can't handle it. When everybody else is working, I'm the only one out there doing nothing. I got nobody to stop and bother. <laughs> when I first started having the heart problems, I was in Branson, Missouri, and that's when, I mean, I just fell over in the furniture store take me out here to the local hospital and uh, I got to have that open heart surgery and that's when I had it. I got about 13 good years out of that and gosh, I was right back like I was. Chest pressure, couldn't move around much. I couldn't get the motorcycle, I couldn't get it off of the kickstand, it was too heavy. So I went back and the same doctor said, I, I just can't do any more for you. Mr. Jacobs is somebody who had suffered with angina for years. He described it to me as a pain in his chest that came on with just about any exertion. Over a two to three year period, he repeated stress tests, multiple angioplasties, none of them had been successful. A large number of patients are told it can't be done or doesn't need to be treated. And there's a huge undertreatment of patients with coronary disease. Health as you get older is the most important thing. Because you may have wealth, but if you don't have health, wealth is useless. Prior to my first heart attack, I worked very, very hard and did not pay attention to health or anything else. And given that, I had my first heart attack at the age of 37 and December 16th, 1991, the second heart attack took place. He actually had been referred down to have bypass surgery. And after meeting with the surgeons and reading about the potential options, he just adamantly didn't want to have bypass. So Mr. Patel and his wife talked to, I think, three different interventional cardiologists who felt that his anatomy was not amenable to percutaneous techniques. And it was interesting that when you talk to his doctors, he was asymptomatic. Except when you talk to him, he wouldn't walk faster than three miles an hour in a treadmill because he started to feel bad. I was led to believe that there is nothing you can do about this thing. A heart attack took place and you lost your muscle forever and you cannot bring it back. I'm not sure if CTO found me or I found CTO but uh, patients with chronic total occlusion struck me as a group of patients who were in desperate need for some relief. I pursued uh, becoming a CTO operator largely because I, I, I didn't want to say no to patients and I didn't want to be in a position um, to not have an offering to make these patients feel better. Nobody has been prepared in the past to take those cases on. They don't have the skill or, or don't have the motivation to learn how to open a chronically occluded vessel. And this has always been the holy grail of interventional cardiology, is to be able to fix CTOs. I was uh, hanging out in my office one day and a couple of my friends come in, took one look at me. Oh, they loaded me in the car and hustled me right on down to the hospital. I didn't figure I'd come back, I really didn't. I mean, I, I felt horrible. I just, you know, I was to the point I give up, I didn't care. And then, uh, when I met Dr. Grantham, he had 30 doctors sitting there watching him. I told him he better do a good job, and uh, he did. They uh, took me up to my room, 
and I had sold my motorcycle thinking I wasn't going to get to ride it no more. I got on the telephone and ordered me a new one. <laughs> and uh, I feel great today. There are very few doctors who do this. So I started Googling. And the first thing I noticed is Dr. Lombardi's name. A set of films uh, arrived in my office and he wanted to be fixed and he wanted to make sure that it was fixed by one of the leading experts in CTO-PCI from a technical standpoint. Dr. Lombardi sends me a message through his secretary, come on down, I'll fix you. About a couple months after his procedure, I got an email from him saying that he was jogging on the treadmill and he was training for a half marathon. Then the next email I got, he had just done his half marathon. And then probably six to eight months after the procedure, I got an email saying that he just did a sub six hour marathon on a treadmill at his local sports club and he was thrilled. It's wonderful. It's wonderful that returning his heart function to normal, he gets to go back and do whatever he wants. To put it very simply, this is a new person who has got his heart back. These stories of success and of patients who get better are what really drives us to do more. The new operators have the ability to pick up all of the experience that's been developed over the years. So they can go to a teaching course around the world and they've got a huge body of experience that they can work on. In the past 10 years, there's been an extraordinary evolution in the CTO training with the consolidation of knowledge, the expansion of the community. There's a systematic way to be able to push the educational process forward and to, to reproduce the education of operators. What CTO gave to me personally was being able to offer patients more options. CTO PCI is not for every patient but it also gives me more tools to be able to treat patients effectively and being able to give them more options in terms of their treatments. Becoming a CTO operator takes a total commitment. It is not easy. There's lots to be learned. There are many barriers that have to be overcome. But if you succeed, you'll find yourself to be a much better interventionalist. This is great. Thank you for using your E-flat, double-sprung, double-clutching, super-space-blasting laser to open my 100% blockage. I don't know how to begin to be able to express my gratitude for what you've done for my family and I. My Superman, I feel so blessed you were placed in our lives. For me, there is not another aspect in cardiology where cardiologists are able to provide the, the type of benefits that we see. They tell us, literally on the table, they feel like they can take a breath again. For the first time in years, they don't have this constricting feeling around their chest. And it's a very simple core value. Take good care of patients, treat the patient, not the angiogram, teach other physicians and collaborate. This isn't about magic. You don't have to be the world's greatest wire guy to be good at CTLPCI, you have to be humble but confident guy to learn new techniques and how to apply them.